What's up, what's up? I'm Rebuilder Guy, and this is my super awesome Super Aeronautique 230. It's a wake slash surf boat, but it is heavily damaged that I bought at Copart, wrecked and flooded. If you wanna see the first video of when I received it and how that happened, link is gonna be in the top right hand corner. So last video, I tried to do some things, try to clean it up, but I couldn't because this Texas sun is no joke. I think it's like 95 degrees today. It's nuts. I can't do anything outside. And I also don't have a hitch for this trailer. So I have to modify my forklift and then push it right into that shop there so I could actually get to cleaning because this is, this is filthy and nasty. All right, guys, since I sold the truck, I didn't have a way to move the boat around. So I got some friends here putting in a hole in the in the forklift so I could put this hitch on it. Let's see how it's done. That's awesome. The more I keep looking, the more problems I keep finding. So the gel coat here, I don't know if you can see this, it is all cracked. The stress of it, you can see that? See when I move the camera? That's pretty bad and it goes all the way up here and this is on both sides. I think we might just have to paint the entire upper portion of the boat. That's just crazy. Look at that, it goes all the way back. Over here it's fine, but right here, it's pretty bad. And it keeps going and going and going all the way till about this point here. So half of the boat the gel coat is trash. I don't know if we're gonna use automotive paint on this. I keep reading that's gonna be the best bet because gel coat is such a pain in the butt to apply. Let me know what you guys think down below. Should I do gel coat or just automotive paint? Check her out, nice and pretty and clean. Eh, about 75% clean but it revealed a little bit more damage to the hole. We got nicks and scrapes and scratches that need to be addressed and repaired. We got one here on the side. Also, I don't know what I was thinking, but I guess I'm blind when I was looking at the boat underneath and I didn't notice this. Look at this prop. It's definitely bent. All right, so yesterday we got to the fuel tank cover. We got that removed. And today, the goal is to remove that, those side seats right there and uh, see the damage that, caused, that was caused to fiberglass.
that just looks so much better. Got it pressure washed. That fuel tank looks really clean now. Let's inspect this damage a little bit. We took all these seats out so it'd be easier access. Probably gonna take this off later. That's the damage. This fiberglass here. There's no reinforcement underneath either. Now uh, you won't be able to see. Uh, let's see if, it, there we go. It's literally just bolted on to the fiberglass. So I think we should be a-okay. Just that gel coat is starting to scare me a little bit. I don't know how I'm gonna paint it. We got some damage here. So the next step now is just gonna be to clean up the remaining seats and this dashboard to at least make it presentable. And also this front bow area, clean up all these seat cushions. And then we get to jump into the engine compartment, the funnest part of the boat. <laughs> nice windshield. It's that it's that custom. It's some hard work to clean up this vinyl, let me tell you what. But if somebody could tell me what this is, it's all over the vinyl, these little pink dots. We can't seem to get them out. They're like everywhere. But this is how she's coming along. Everything looks great. Of course, this isn't the final detail. This is just preliminary but it's already looking a million times better. And we did have a failed shock and it's here in the glove box. Yeah. Got that stereo looking nice. I'm so happy with the turnout, it looks great. Now we're starting with the back. All right, cleaning on the interior is pretty much done. Let's jump into this engine. We found a couple missing spark plugs, but the ones that we do have, this is what it's looking like. You wanna show a spark plug, Vic? Just gonna unscrew it real quick. Nautique did a really good job. They put in these plastic dividers so you have easier access to the engine. We didn't have that in the last boat. Very, very helpful, so that's pretty cool. After we get the spark plug out, I wanna show you the threads, and then I wanna actually spin the engine and see if it's gonna turn. After that, we're gonna pour in some ATF and let it sit overnight, and then possibly in the next video, this thing is up and running. Of course, if the link system decides to turn on. You got that plug? kind of a tight squeeze in there. Let's check it out. Hey, that's not that bad. Definitely some hours on it, but that's not terrible. But there was definitely engine water in the engine. So here you go. So hopefully it starts up and runs. Like I said, we're gonna put some ATF in it, let it sit and uh, hopefully crank her up in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and sharing, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.
This is a super awkward position, but as you can see, pulleys are turning. Crank is turning. We are in good shape.